In this video, we're going to create a real-time data visualization that uses a particle photon microcontroller to send sensor values to Google Firebase. The values are going to be stored in there and ultimately displayed in real-time using P5JS. Essentially, by the end of the video, we're going to be able to cover up this photoresistor and see the values change dynamically in real time in a P5JS sketch. I'll link to all of the code samples in the description below. Now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we just need to wire up our board. So we're going to take the photoresistor and we're going to plug one end into analog zero and the other end into analog five. Then we're going to take our 220 ohm resistor and plug one end into analog zero and the other one into ground. Now open up a web browser and go ahead and visit particle.io and sign up for an account if you don't already have one. But I already have one, so I'm going to head over to the IDE. And I'm going to create a new app. And I'm going to call this one Light Sensor. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to set up my pins. So up here at the top, I'm going to tell Particle that my photoresistor is plugged into analog zero. And let me go ahead and set up that pin mode in the setup function. And that's going to be an input. In this example, we're actually going to send power to the photoresistor by supplying 3.3 volts of voltage to analog pin 5. So here in the setup function, we're just going to set the pin mode of A5, the power one, to an output because we're sending voltage to it. And here with the digital write, as soon as the program starts, um, we're going to send 3.3 volts of power to that pin. And now we're just going to use a simple analog read to see how much light reaches the photoresistor. And we're going to store that data into a new variable called light value. And now we're just going to use the particle publish method to publish the data to the particle cloud. I'm going to call it light and I'm going to cast it as a string. Just to keep things simple, I'm just going to put a delay in there so it sends a new value to the particle cloud every two seconds. Now I'm just going to save my work and then I'm going to verify it. You'll see in the message below, it says compiling code. And if everything works, this is great. And now that everything's good, let's go ahead and flash it to the particle board. And during this process, you should see a lot of blinking lights, magentas and stuff like that. Um, and when it's all done, it will breathe blue again. And sometimes this takes a minute. Okay, we're good. Now, right now, we're actually sending those values to the particle cloud. So I'm going to open up my console so that I can see all of those published commands displayed in real time. So there we go. We got light, and there's a value. It looks like right now it's around 700. And we're getting a new value every two seconds. You can also check this on your device by clicking on your device in the app, clicking on events, and you'll see basically the same thing. So this is a good way to debug just to make sure that your program is actually working. Cool. Okay, so we have sensor values getting sent to the particle cloud. 
Now, what if we wanted to store them? So for this, we're going to use Google Firebase. It's a real-time database. And assuming you already signed up, let's go into your console. And we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to add a new project. And I'm going to call mine Light Sensor. Okay, so this is getting set up. Now that we're in, let's go ahead and go to the databases area of our project. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the default rules from having to be authenticated into allowing us for the purposes of this demo just to read and write to the database without being authenticated. You can make this more strict later if you'd like. Now that we have our database set up, we need to integrate it with the particle cloud. So inside the console, you can click on integrations, then new integration, and click on webhook. It's going to ask you some basic information. So I'll go ahead and put the event name in there. I'm going to call it light. Now for the URL, I actually have to go to the overview section in Firebase and copy the database URL. So let me paste that in there. and. I'm going to append light.json in there because that's where my data is being stored in the tree. I'm going to choose my device so that any device can go to it. And in the JSON section, I'm going to pass it some values. The first one being light, the thing that we're actually publishing. And the value in there is going to be the default particle event value variable. Next thing I'm going to send to it it's just like the default particle event value timestamp. Now we also have to authenticate into Firebase, otherwise we get a 401 error. So I'm going to pass it this auth parameter, and I have to go get this sort of the secret database key. So inside of Firebase, I'm going to Project Settings. I'm going to click on Service Accounts. And I'm going to click on Database Secrets. Now, this functionality is actually depreciated, but I don't know if there's another way to do it currently. So if there is, please let me know in the comments. So I'm going to get the value in that secret field. And I'm going to paste it back into Particle. And that will allow this integration to happen. So I'm going to leave everything else as is for right now. And I'll go ahead and create that webhook. All right, good. So just to make sure this worked, I'm going to click on the light.json hyperlink just to see if there's any data in there. Good, and there is, because we're already sending those sensor values. Now, if it wasn't working, it would say null. And then just to show you where that data lives, I'm going to click on the database tab in Firebase. And you should see right now there are values coming from Particle and finding their way into Firebase. OK, now that we're able to send and store that data, we want to display it in some interesting way. So I'm going to use p5.js, this JavaScript library, to do that. So, um, But first, I'm going to need a couple of files. So in the download section, go ahead and download the complete p5.js file. And then go ahead and unzip it. And I'm going to be working in the empty example folder. So there are a couple of files inside this folder, and the first being index.html. So I'm going to go ahead in there, and I need to link to Firebase's JavaScript library. So let me go in there. I'm going to copy that script tag that's in the overview section. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it into p5.js. By the way, I'm using brackets as my editor, but you can use whatever you want. Next, I'm going to head into the sketch.js folder and just going to start with some boilerplate code. Um, my canvas is going to be 800 pixels wide by 400 pixels high. I'm going to give it a, a white background to start things off. I'm not going to do anything in the draw function. I'm going to handle all the drawing um, with events. And now I'm going to bring in Google's Firebase into p5.js. 
using their configuration information that you can find in the overview section. So I'll go ahead and paste that up on top. Yours is probably going to look a little bit different. By the way, I'm going <laughs> to remove this project so you're not hacking my database, but uh, it's, it's cool for right now. And so now that I have all the configuration information, I can go ahead and fire up the database. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, cool. So now let me show you how to bring that data into P5. So let's head over to Firebase real quick to see how our data is structured. So in the database link, you should see all of your data and everything that I'm working within is under this thing called light, right? It's kind of like a directory tree. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use that as a reference. So database.reference light. I'm going to limit it to 160 records first because I don't want a million of them, just, just the first couple. And I'm going to say on child added, which means that every time a piece of data is added to Firebase, this is going to get fired. Um, it also gets fired the first time you run your program. So it'll actually, if you, it'll run 160 times if you have 160 records. And for each record, it puts it inside of a snapshot. So I'm going to go ahead and check out what's inside of that snapshot. So I'm going to create a variable called data, and I'm just going to get the value of that snapshot, and I'm going to print it to the console. So let me go ahead and create a live preview. Brackets can do it. It actually launches like a small little web server. And yeah, it doesn't look like much, but if I open up the console, I should see, hopefully, a lot of data. So each of them is an object, and uh, yeah, so it's working. Good. So now I want to convert the values I'm getting from the sensor to values that I can actually use, preferably somewhere between 0 and 255. So I'm going to normalize this using the p5.js map function. So I can go ahead and pass it the light value that I'm getting from Firebase. I'm expecting it to be somewhere between 0 and 800, but I'd really like it to be somewhere between 0 and 255. And so the map function will normalize it for me. So let's create a really simple graph. Basically just a bunch of rectangles all next to one another, like you saw in the beginning of the video. And so to do this, I'm going to create a counter variable so that the first value starts at 0, the other one starts at 1, and so on. So I'm going to make sure I have no outline on these rectangles. And the fill color of the rectangle is going to be the normalized light value. 0 meaning black, 255 meaning white, 100 being gray. So I'm going to create a rectangle. And in the x-axis, I'm going to make it the counter value times 5, because it's going to be 5 pixels wide, starting at 0 in the y, 5 pixels wide, and spanning the height of the screen. And then I'm just going to increment this counter variable so that the next rectangle is right next to the one previous to it. So let's go see if that worked. I'm going to open up Chrome. Make sure we save it first. Open up Chrome and refresh it. And you should see all of your data spread across the screen. Now I'm just going to make one change. I don't want it to span the entire screen when I first open it. So maybe I want it to span the first half of the screen. So I'm going to only get the first 80 records. And right here, I'm going to write a conditional that will increment the counter until it reaches the end of the screen. And when it reaches the end of the screen, I'm actually going to have it reset and start over. So when it starts over, we'll make the background white, we'll set the counter back equal to zero, and the visualization will start again. So 
should also write a little bit of code in there so I can see what the value is right now. So I'll go ahead and I'll use the text command. I'll make the text size pretty big. I'll make sure it's aligned in the center because it should change about every two seconds or so. And uh, I'm going to make the text equal to whatever light value is currently being sent over. And I'll put that text basically right in the middle of the screen. Just realize I probably need like a circle or something for it to sit on because uh, otherwise it's going to just write over itself. So I'm just going to make a white circle that's also in the middle of the screen, about 200 pixels wide and 200 pixels high. And I'll have to change the fill color so that the text isn't also white. So I'll just make it the same value as a normalized light. Go see how that works. Refresh it. Cool. So we're starting to beginning of the screen. We're seeing the current sensor value and our data visualization is working. So let's see what happens when I cover up the sensor. Hopefully I'll see it reflected in the visualization and yes we do. So I think that about wraps things up. Thanks so much for watching.